China's COVID commandos. The authorities closed down a city of more than one million after just three reported cases. Now, that's a strategy that includes things like this, pop-up tents where you can get a booster on the way home and win prizes as well. But it also includes very, very harsh measures that can be imposed on a city in a matter of hours. It's more than a million and counting in the U.S. as it hits the highest number of daily infections ever recorded. President Biden urges people to get vaccinated. This continues to be a pandemic of the unvaccinated. So we got to make more progress. Prince Andrew's lawyers argue in court for the sexual assault civil lawsuit against him to be thrown out. They say he can't be sued because of an agreement signed by his accuser, Virginia Giuffre. Despite strict COVID rules, Novak Djokovic will be allowed to defend his Australian Open title without being vaccinated as he's granted a medical exemption. And the science of climate change, with temperatures in Antarctica rising at three times the global average, we speak to a scientist on board a polar research ship there. Police in Washington, D.C. have been outlining the security measures they've put in place ahead of the first anniversary of the attack on the U.S. Capitol. The police chief said the building's security team had implemented more than 90 recommendations following investigations into the intelligence and operational failures that led to the breach. Police in India have detained an 18-year-old woman they believe to be behind an app that shared pictures of dozens of Muslim women saying they were for sale. A 21-year-old man who's also been arrested denies any wrongdoing. The app, which was removed from the web platform GitHub after complaints, has been condemned by Indian politicians and women's rights groups. Japanese car manufacturer Toyota has overtaken General Motors as the leading seller of cars in the United States. GM had been king of U.S. auto sales since 1931, when it took the number one spot away from Ford. This shakeup comes after a shortage of crucial computer chips plagued car makers in 2021. The new James Webb Telescope has completed a crucial task in its quest to observe some of the most distant objects in the universe. Its controllers completed the deployment of the Space Observatory's giant kite-shaped sun shield, which is the size of a tennis court. The barrier will allow the telescope to detect signals deep in space. NASA's new James Webb Telescope has successfully deployed its massive sun shield which is going to be a crucial task in its quest to photograph the first stars to shine in the cosmos. Uh, the shield, which is the size of a tennis court, was unveiled using motorised pulleys and cables. And the telescope, which is regarded as the successor to the Hubble Space Observatory, was launched on Christmas Day. Wait for those pictures to come back. <laughs> Might take a long yeah, time. Was, I'm not sure how long that would take. Get them to the chemist, get them processed, they'll yeah. be back soon. Do you remember that? Yeah. That's quite a while since we've done that. Isn't Showing it? our age. Move on. <laughs> yeah, shall we? And this is the Metro's back page this morning, reporting on the tennis star Novak Djokovic being granted a controversial medical exemption, which allows him to travel to Australia, play in the Australian Open, without proving that he's been vaccinated against COVID. Uh, the headline there, no vax, no problem. Well, moving to tennis now, and the men's world number one, Novak Djokovic, has received a medical exemption to enter Australia, bypassing the strict rules that only allow vaccinated people to enter the country. The news means that Djokovic, who has been critical of mandatory vaccinations, can now compete in the Australian Open. On Tuesday, he tweeted this picture on the airport tarmac, bags packed, with the caption, Happy New Year! Today, I'm heading down under with an exemption permission. Let's go 2022. Now, the authorities in Kazakhstan have declared a two-week state of emergency in the main city, Almaty, and in a western province as a wave of protests hits the country. They resulted from the authorities' decision to lift price caps on vehicle fuel, and that caused prices to surge. A later government move to cancel that price rise apparently failed to calm the protesters. 
South Korea has reported the launch of what it called an unspecified projectile from North Korea's east coast. The launch is the first of the new year for Pyongyang. At a meeting of the North's ruling party last week, its leader, Kim Jong-un, vowed to continue to build up North Korea's military capabilities despite the impact of international sanctions. In South Africa, the man accused of torching the country's parliament building has appeared in court. Zandile Christmas Maffei faces five charges, including arson and possession of an explosive device. The man has denied all charges and his lawyer says that he is being made a scapegoat.